Hi everyone, what do we have here? We have this Samsung A02 receipt from another shop and the phone is not powering on. So we are going to connect the phone to our DC power supply, have the battery removed because I am boosting the battery. So let's connect it to our DC power supply so that we, we will know what exactly we have to do. So I am connecting it using my boot cable. So we have the phone connected to my DC power supply. And uh, taking a look at the DC power supply, it shows uh, it shows a current leakage, a very small current leakage. And that small current leakage, based on the reading that we are getting, this is a very small current leakage, which shows that it's either from the the, the VPH or somewhere in a mobile PCB, not a VBAD. If, if it was the VBAD, we will have a high current leakage here. Yeah. So what we are going to do in this type of case, you need to keep in mind that you don't have to go blindly troubleshooting every section in a mobile PCB. You start from the VPH section. So I have my schematic diagram here. We will look. I have the guideline of this mobile PCB. We will take a look at the guideline to follow the VBAT until we get the VPH. So if you take a look, we have the battery connector. We have the battery connector. You can see we have the V bat here, right? So if I follow that V bat, is the V bat line. If I follow the V bat, you will see that it doesn't even get into the PMU IC in which I've talked about this in a lot of videos and on my courses. You study how these lines are. So we are looking for the charging IC. Because like I said in my professional level course, you get the primary, which is the VBAT, then the primary is being converted to the secondary, which is the VPH, by the charging IC. Only when it comes to uh, uh, big charging ICs, for so small charging ICs, mobile phone charging ICs, those phones will go directly, the VBAT will go directly to the VBAT instead of going. In phones that uses a small charging IC, the VBAT voltage goes straight to the power manager IC because there is no charging IC, big charging IC to convert that VBAT to the VPH. So if you follow that line, you will see that you will see that it gets to this IC here. You can see the VBAT this is the VBAT input into the IC. And what we are looking for, we are looking for this. If you take a look, you will see VSYS, so that's also known as the VPH. You will see VSYS, VBAT SYS, or VPH, depending on the mobile PCB that you are working on. So we will start. We will have to locate this section. So I will have to remove the PCB, locate that section, so that you will have access even if we have to remove the shields because yeah i think that's what we have to do before we can gain access to the to this section and the components so we have the pcb here and as you can see we have to remove we have to remove this shield here to gain access to the circuit so instead i could just cut this out this particular section here to gain access just uh, at, at the top of the, the charging IC but I want to remove everything because yeah it's very possible that a problem problem might be coming from another section so that's okay so let me go straight to my microscope I will be doing everything while explaining So when it comes to removing the shield, if you have been watching my videos, you will know that I always create a point to be able to easily send in, to easily send in my tweezer. So that's all that I wanted to do. So I apply a little paste and hit.
so you just pull it out like that just like that and very smooth without having to heat it too much so i will wait for the pcb to cool down while waiting for the pcb to cool down there is something that we need to do we have to look at the schematics again at the guideline so what we are looking for we are looking for the we are looking for the components that are connected to the vph line like components that are connected in parallel so we look at the component like capacitors you can see one side and you can see one side connected to the to the gnd so we will test this component here and also we have the the ovp output here we also have to test this section here even though i believe if there was a shot around this section the phone will be able to switch on and not able to charge so let's we will test this capacitor so all you have to do is set your multimeter to continuity test mode set your multimeter to continuity test mode and perform what i call a cold testing so we test that component so to perform a cold testing you have the red probe to the ground then you use the the black probe to test okay great if you listen carefully you will hear a beep from my multimeter as you can see this is where the the ovp 5 volt supposed to be getting into the to the charging ic so we have this resistor right here if there was a shot in the ovp section like i said the phone will be able to switch on and not able to charge and if there is a shot you will get a shot here but there is no shot here but we have a shot here in the vph line as i suspected so that capacitor is shorting and uh, no component around is shorting as well so what we have to do we take a look at the display section the display section also uses a vysys voltage so there should be a shot here that's a shot have a shot here no shot okay so what we have to do we will start from here we will use our you will use our rosin flux as short powder to see if the the, the shorting is coming from here So I will spray the other section, which is the display section as well. So that should be okay. All you have to do from here, you set set 3.5 volt and 5 ampere. So you you place the the black probe of your DC power supply to the ground and here we inject the 5 volt so we are going to inject the 5 volt in the positive side of this capacitor we inject it here so I can see that there is a, a very high current consumption 1.9 amps from my DC power supply but there is nothing hitting here so we scroll to the other side seems like there is nothing hitting hitting here also so there is no shot coming out from this section so what we will have to do we will have to locate the the power ic section of this mobile pcb and let me just show you so if we take a look at the other side of the pcb you will see that we have the power ic here right so the after the, the charging ic converts 
the primary to the secondary voltage most of the power goes to the power IC so that when you trigger the phone the power IC will start the voltage distribution So now we have our power manager IC and to make things simple if you go back to the schematic diagram and take a look at the bit mapping it will be easy for us to know exactly where the, the VSYS lines are heading to around the power manager IC. So we open our bit mapping we head to the charging IC section so we get here and we click on this. So this is the VPH line. So we have to scroll to the charging to the power manager IC section and take a look at the capacitors that are connected to the VPH line. So the reason why we are doing this, I want us to inject the voltage from this side. So what I'm going to do here is very simple. I use my multimeter. So this capacitor is connected to the VPH. There should be a shot. That's a shot. All these capacitors here are connected to the VPH. There's a shot. All of them are shorting. So they are shorting. So what I will do here is that I will inject the 3.5 volt here. I will inject that 3.5 volt here with 5 amps, then see what will happen. So what I will do here, I just spray. So now I will inject the voltage to the capacitor. And we observe the PCB and see if anything is hitting here. So I can see that capacitor heating up slowly. Yeah, that should be the capacitor, right? So let's see. Let's just hope that this is the only capacitor causing the shot. So what we will do here, we go ahead and remove this capacitor. We just pull the capacitor out. And we test this capacitor. Remember, this is the capacitor where we inject the voltage. So if I test right now, I'm getting 333 ohm reading here. And this is the negative side. And everything is okay. So, which means that we have removed the shock. So now we will go ahead and test the PCB to see if the PCB will switch on now. Take a look and uh, everything is okay and here we go take a look just like that and very smooth so make sure you follow subscribe for more videos because i create tutorial videos all the time i have courses where you learn troubleshooting like this will be the basic things that you will learn from my professional level course and when it comes to troubleshooting using schematic diagram, which is very important, you see what I did right here. I consider what I was doing here using the guideline and the bit mapping as the basis because when it gets to a complicated troubleshooting section, you will have to use the real schematic diagram to go deeper into troubleshooting, which I, I talked about that in my professional level course, how to, to troubleshoot every single secret, how to understand everything. So well, I'm to use my right here. See you soon.